that movie. I'm going to say a, a line from the movie, and you're going to shout out what the movie is. Just call it out as soon as you know what it is. All right. Life is like a box of chocolates. Forrest Gump. You can't handle the truth. Few uh, good men. Few good men. Remember, Danny, two wrongs don't make a right, but three rights make a left. Caddyshack. <laughs> it's one of my guilty pleasure movies. I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her a little or a lot. Oh, man. Notting Hill. If you've never watched it and you like rom-coms, that's one you've got to watch. If you build it, he will come. Field of, field, of field of dreams. Now that last line was quickly turned into, if you build it, they will come. The line became a mantra for building new businesses, ballparks, arenas, shopping malls, and churches. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a false mantra. Too many businesses and churches quickly learned a new building did not guarantee new customers or new members. And we discovered that businesses and churches actually need to have a product that people believe they need and want presented in an appealing way before they'll actually show up and invest their time and energy, not to mention their money. Too many denominations made the mistake of believing if they built it, people would come. Now that was probably based on the belief that there was a time when churches didn't really have to worry about people showing up. The years between 1945 and 1963, between the end of World War II and the buildup of troops in Vietnam, those were great years for churches. We didn't need marketing groups because finding a church, preferably the denomination in which we were raised, was the first thing people did after moving to a new community. Church was where connections were made, friendships were formed, and business was done. The church was the center of community life. In the mid-60s, our national culture began to change. And now 60 years later, I know for those of us who were young in the 60s, 60 years later, our culture has changed to the point where belonging to a church has fallen out of favor for generations younger than most of ours. Christian churches and Christian people are now generally regarded by non-Christian people as a bunch of hypocrites and a bunch of judgmental people. Church has gone from being the center of the community to hanging on to the fringes of community life. And that means building a church building does not immediately pull people into the building. It does not cause them to want to worship the God we know through Jesus our Christ. It does not compel people to believe in Jesus as their Christ. And effectively sharing the message of God that pulls people into our faith takes more than a building. Today we celebrate Pentecost. And Pentecost in the Bible was a Jewish festival. Pentecost was called Shavuot, Shavuot. And it was the Feast of First Fruits held 50 days after the festival of, of Passover. In the first century, Pentecost was one of the three, three feast days where all Jewish men were expected to travel to Jerusalem to both worship, celebrate, and make sacrifices, well, three things, and to make sacrifices at the temple. Now, originally, Shavuot was a time to celebrate the first, first harvest, or the first fruits on earth. Later, it became a celebration of the Ten Commandments from God. And for Christians, it became the day when the Holy Spirit filled Jesus' followers with the ability to share the story of Jesus, his teachings, his death, and his resurrection. Peter pre preached to the crowd, and the book of Acts reported 3,000 people, 3,000 Jewish men were baptized that day as they claimed Jesus as their Messiah, their Christ, and his teachings as their truth. Now in my lifetime, Pentecost has been a time to thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the Christian church. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
That's what we're used to it being. But in the 21st century, if we want Jesus and the Christian church to remain relevant in our world, and that's where we are right now, folks. We're fighting for relevancy. We're fighting to make a difference in the world around us. And if we want the Church of Jesus Christ and the Christian Church to remain relevant in our world, we're going to have to do more than just thank God for the Holy Spirit and celebrate the birthday of the Christian Church. If we want Pentecost to be meaningful today, we're going to have to actually open our hearts and our souls and our lives to the Holy Spirit so that it can inspire us into sharing our faith, into taking action, if following Jesus is going to have meaning, we must be willing to let the Holy Spirit move us to make a commitment. If the whole Christian church is going to remain relevant, we must be willing to commit ourselves to offering new and exciting ways of making an impact in the lives of people who have absolutely no interest in Christianity. And sadly, that is the majority of people in our nation. People who have zero interest in Christianity. We have to offer something exciting and compelling to those who have lost their patience, waiting for the church to act as though the Holy Spirit makes a difference in our lives. I know it's not what we expected out of celebration. But we have to be willing to look at the, and talk to those people and show those who think we're a bunch of hypocrites, who spend nothing but money on ourselves, and show them that we actually want to make a difference in our communities. And those people who have dropped out of the church because they've heard everything and done everything, and they're tired of doing the things the same old way, we have to show them we're willing to act in compelling ways that make a difference in our world. Which means our job on this Pentecost in 2021 is to create activities, ministries, and programs that take us beyond our church walls out into the community. We must make meaningful connections with people who would otherwise avoid anything to do with the church. We have to look beyond what we're already doing to create programs and ministries that invite others to become involved. And our, our invitations have to be offered in every means possible. Now, our marketing team here at Lakeshore is doing a great job. We're, they're doing a great job of sharing Lakeshore with people who look like us. Posters, flyers, and the radio reach people who look like us, who are our age, who are our ethnicity, who have our same hair color, who share the same interests. And our marketing job team is doing a great job with the time they have and the tools that we have given them. And I'm pleased with everything our marketing team is doing to invite others to participate here at Lakeshore. But if we want to reach people who are younger than we are, I'm just looking at the color of our hair. <laughs> if we want to reach people who are younger than we are, as well as people who are new to our communities, and that, my friends, is a growing number, we need to add more ways of connecting with others in addition to what we're already doing. And we've given the marketing team everything they, they can handle, which means the rest of us are going to have to become involved. Now, personal invitation is still the most effective way to get people involved in the activities of the church. Going up to somebody who's not already invested or involved and say, hey, we're doing this really cool thing, I'd love it if you'd join me. And be willing to take no, because it's going to take at least 17 no's before you get one yes. That's what the statistics now show. Marketing says they make 17 contacts before they get a positive response. How many of us give up after one no? Yeah, 17 times to ask the same person to become involved. And they'll say yes just to get us off their backs. Mm -hmm. But once they come and experience the hospitality here and the way we reach out to each other, 
they'll be back. Once they experience the love of God that we have here, and the love and care for each other that you exhibit, they'll be back. But it takes 17 requests. And on the 18th, they might say yes. That's commitment. That's a commitment that we all need to be willing to make. Now, the past year of the pandemic, we taught everybody. We taught our children, our youth, their parents, and their grandparents to connect with the larger world online, right? Personal invitations, seeing people face to face, thing in the past. So every program we have, every new activity we create, as well as our culture, our beliefs, and our abilities, our authentic and genuine love and openness for others must be presented in a variety of ways on every social media platform known to humankind today. It's not just about putting stuff in paper and in print. It's now about going online and using electronics. Now, Lakeshore is already involved in some really great programs and some really great activities. So when you are in the midst of those programs, when you are in the midst of those activities, please take some pictures. If you don't know how to use your phone to take pictures, talk to somebody younger. <laughs> talk to your kids or your grandkids. They will know how to take those pictures. And the younger the kid, the more willing they will, they will be to take the time to teach us. I'm just telling you. The younger the child, the more they want to be able to be an expert in the eyes of a grown-up. So ask your kids, your grandkids, or your great-grandkids how to use your phone to take a picture. Or how to take a video, even better, a short video. A video up to, up to one minute, up to 60 seconds, can hold someone's interest. If you don't believe it, just go online and watch what's going on out there. People will watch a video of a cat playing the piano for a minute. <laughs> and cats don't play the piano well. But we will watch it. So it takes pictures and short and videos, and then send those pictures and videos to the church office so that we can put them on Facebook, on Instagram, and YouTube, as well as on our church sign on Reed Avenue, which was shut down today for some reason. It's up now. Thank you. Okay, so we can put everything on the church sign. And wouldn't it be fun to, to drive by a church sign and not see the same old? Mm -hmm. But to see a picture of people involved in something that looks like it's really a good thing? Or to stop and see a short video because there's something cool going on that we've never seen before? Let's make use of the instruments that we have because the Holy Spirit wants us to tell the story of Jesus and how our congregation is already helping others learn more about Jesus and want to follow him. And today, friends, stories are not told very much through reading them to each other. Maybe to small children who don't already know how to read, that's an important thing. But adults, do we read stories to each other very often? No, maybe when somebody's in hospice care, it's a little late then. So we need to be able to tell those stories in pictures and videos. And, to, and before you send the pictures and the videos to the office, please ask the people involved if it's okay for us to use their images online. And if it's children, get written permission from the adults in the children, that child's life before we share pictures and videos. Because there's too many goofy people out there. If you have an idea for a program or ministry that takes the church out into the community, please come talk to me, or better yet, send an email to Pastor Cherie. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's next for this congregation. Using this beautiful building as a staging place to go out into the community to invite others to come in to worship with us. To use this place to learn and to grow and to feed our souls so we have the strength to go out into the community to invite others to come join us so that they can grow in the faith. It's not just to come here and do everything and then to leave and go home. It's to come and learn and grow so we can go out into the world and bring others back with us. 
In first century Israel, stories were told with words. That's why Peter could get away with preaching on and on and on, and people would still listen. That's why John Wesley, if you, I, I was trying to sell books of John Wesley's sermons, I don't know if they went or not, but honestly, if you need a cure for insomnia. Um, John Wesley could, could preach for an hour and people would stand enthralled. Do you think that's going to happen today? No, I'm getting away with 15 minutes and you're already getting antsy. <laughs> Peter used words to tell the story, but in 21st century Manitowoc, stories are told through actions and pictures. So that's how we're going to tell the story of Jesus. So name this movie. The church has left the building. I hope that's the movie of Lakeshore Church this year in 2021. Amen. Amen. Man, I talked a long time.